first of all i welcome you all thank you very much for your, for this participation and uh, today my topic of discussion will be the citizens portal uh, it's an app actually it's a mobile app which has been established in pakistan and nowadays it is considered that it is a it has grown as a pivot of good governance in pakistan so this will be the sequence of presentation obviously we'll be going through uh, 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 this mode so i'll just take you little back into the background and the background is that the area from where i come which is like pakistan or if i more precisely call it an indian subcontinent so indian subcontinent or the indian civilization uh, is called uh, indus valley civilization it is one of the oldest civilizations of the world uh, the people had a very refined lifestyle there like 3300 years even before christ and they had very good you know they had planned cities they had universities they had arts crafts and pearls jewels etc and the foundation of that indus valley, valley civilization was a good agrarian uh, culture ag agrarian economy and the food security so these are some of the uh, pictures of the old uh, excavations which have now uh, uh, been uh, uh, found uh, in both india and pakistan you can see that these are these three uh, oldest civilizations and indus valley civilization stands tall amongst uh, the the other two and you can see uh, i mean Uh, the planned cities which which uh, those, those which uh, were there in those old days uh, you can see that the streets and the sectors etc one i have visited these areas and one really gets spell bound to see how advanced those people were and uh, let me uh, uh, tell you that one of the mo modern cities of pakistan called islamabad which is the capital of pakistan has been planned on the taxila which is like this it has the same sectors and streets but a magn it you can call it a magnified view of taxila uh, so this was the level of architecture and the engineering of those days but then indian subcontinent reached to its its zenith point reached to its glory during the mughal era when uh, the affluent the society was very affluent government was strong no one could even dare see Uh, to attack india because indian history has always been uh, filled with the foreign attackers but during this mughal times no we don't see any mughal uh, any any foreign attacker coming to india rather and and on the other hand the uh, the government of india or the indian subcontinent was so much self contained so much so self sufficient that it it never even attempted to go out or to go to to, to do any military ex uh, expeditions outside so you can see the 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 might of these structures you can see the outer might and as well as the inner delicacies of these buildings so this means these inner delicacies tell that the people from all around the world used to come and to work here so this was basically uh, a, a a little background but then what happened that the indian subcontinent came under the british colonization we started in 1757 and remained till 1947 and during this british colonization you can see the results what happened that uh, the india's share in the world economy dropped from 23% at the start of the 18th century to less than 3% in 1947 when britishers were leaving and uh, leaving the india and all the uh, local manufacturers were got crushed because of the cheap uh, imports of the british uh, goods and all those things so and above all there were 12 major famines uh, in the in these 200 years which killed around 60 million people 60 million people you can imagine the miseries of the of the people uh, at that time and these are the miseries of the people who were once the flag bearer of uh, you know the, the the most sophisticated lifestyle on the face of earth so these are some of the some of the glimpses some of the pictures of the um, uh, of the famines uh, these are the fam these are the pictures taken in 1942 1943 just like 5 or 6 years uh, before the uh, britishers left india and these are basically uh the the pictures of the bengal and the punjab with primarily the areas which now constitute pakistan i want to draw your attention on these first two pictures uh, in the first picture you can see starving people but these starving people are ladies and gentlemen not standing in a in a desert they are standing in front of a very fancy building so you can see that their fathers or their grandfathers built these fancy buildings and they had to starve in front of that and the second it it, it really uh i mean my heart bleeds with bleeds when when i see this picture you can see the dead body is no one has the capacity or the uh, i mean uh, courage to bury even these uh, uh, dead people because these uh, images were so common in those days and you see the vultures having the party there 
as well as to add insult to injury, you can see an electricity pole. So this means that electricity was being given, but food was not available. So these were these. This is just these are just five to six years before the creation of Pakistan, and then. Uh, in 1947, there came the when the Pakistan was created. British when left India, they there was a political movement. India was bifurcated into two countries. 80% India became the modern India, and like 20% or 15 to 20% became Pakistan. So Pakistan came into being in 1947. But I tell, let me tell you that this division was not a very uh, good experience or a very cozy thing. That they said, okay, we 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 put a line, and this line will be all okay. It was not like that. It was a very terrifying, those are very terrifying times. 15 million people migrated from either this side to that side or that side to this side. And this uh, migration or movement of 15 million people is still known to be the biggest mass movement in the history of human uh, humankind. You know, it's a mankind's biggest uh, mass movement. And this uh, movement was teamed with all types of brutalities on both sides. It was not like that people coming to one side were uh, uh, subject to brutalities and others were not. It was on the both sides. And I mean, people were killed, women were raped, and you imagine any kind of brutality under the, under the sky and those brutalities happened. And with this, uh, in this background, Pakistan started its journey in 1947. Uh, the initial issues were obviously the first and foremost issue of Pakistan was that there was a scarcity of well-established public offices. Since the center of power has had always remained um, uh, in, in Delhi, which became part of India, or all the major presidencies, the major princely states, or the major infrastructure which the Mughals, the Britishers, or even the previous ones had, had, had established, all became part of India. Pakistan basically comprised of the areas which were kind of not having those kind of sophisticated civil uh, offices and these kind of uh, uh, facilities. And above all, on one side, there was no sophisticated uh, public offices, public proper infrastructure. And on the other hand, there was a huge influx of the refugees all in a very, sh in, in shambles they were coming. There was a fragile economy. There was no industry as such. And there were boundary issues with all the neighbors because India, because the Britishers had different kind of arrangements with different uh, neighboring countries. Like they had different arrangement with Afghanistan, they had different arrangement with Iran, different arrangement with China, something. So all these boundary issues were there. So these are basically some of the pictures uh, which tell the initial days of Pakistan. The last two pictures you can see uh, the refugee camps. In the middle, you can see the people who are uh, coming, migrating to Pakistan. And there is a news clipping which tells that 6 lakh murders in 7 days. So these are the times of 1947 when India and uh, Pakistan started their journey. However, since British colonized Indian subcontinent, so they had to have a proper bureaucracy or a, or a structured civil service so that that civil service may... Uh, take their agenda along. So when Britishers left, although the economy was in shambles, although uh, uh, the other uh, economic indicators or the social indicators were very bad, but one thing was that Pakistan and India inherited a very structured form of a civil service, a very uh, uh, competent, uh, merit based uh, civil service and this civil service basically since Pakistan now I come to Pakistan Pakistan is a federation having different provinces and a central government uh, main uh, subjects uh, rest with the provinces so this is the uh, the simplified structure of the provincial civil service that the at the top the administrative head or the administrative boss uh, is the provincial chief secretary and then the provincial chief secretary has two arms on one arm there are departments uh, which are headed by the secretaries and the, those secretaries have again two components, one on in their secretariat, their deputy secretaries, assistant secretaries and uh, the field officers as well. And on the other hand, this thing is a very novel idea which the Britishers established in, in, in the Indian subcontinent and that was to put their representative as a coordinating head, as a, as a representative of their government in the in different field. So there were divisional commissioners, there were deputy commissioners in the districts. Districts are the administrative unit of Pakistan. So deputy commissioner is basically the, the chief executive officer, you can say, of, of a district. And then in the subdivisions, there are assistant commissioners. So with this uh, civil service, uh, 
So you see, Pakistan, on if if we if we talk about the political arena, Pakistan had many kind of experiments. Uh, we had parliamentary form of government, we had presidential form of government, we had military takeovers, we had uh, different kind of technocratic governments, we had semi-military, semi-democratic uh, kind of political arena in which there were some emergencies were imposed. Or you can we have in the recent past we have seen uh, extraordinary judicial activism, but the Fact of the matter is that the stabilizing factor, the shock absorbing factor in Pakistan has always remained this civil service, this uh, steel framework I must say upon which the administrative uh, structure of Pakistan rests. And with this, uh, this civil service remained custodian of steady development of Pakistan and it maintained its political neutrality to much extent and meritocracy absolutely. So these are some of the uh, uh, achievements. Pakistan has the w one of the longest irrigation systems. We have achieved self-sufficiency in agriculture. Uh, Pakistan is a leading exporter of linen, rice, yarn, etc. Establishment of heavy industries. I'm not uh, dilating upon these things. I'll be more focused on the second part of this slide that in the early 2000s, there came an ec a communication revolution in Pakistan. There was a boom of private TV channels. The uh, internet access reached to around 95% of Pakistan. And people start, and the cell phone industry grew, grew as you know, this is uh, contemporary uh, in our world. Uh, more than 95% population of Pakistan has cell phones. And an interesting fact is that 60% 60, 60 has more than one cell phone. So people, you can see people that whenever they open their eyes in the morning, the first their task is to keep the, uh, to, to get the phone and see the, the Facebook or whatever they want to do. And when they go ba back to sleep, the last task is to see their phone and then they go to sleep. So this is kind of a, a kind of a revolution which, which, which is there in Pakistan. And then there is a vi very vibrant social media. People come and people express their opinion and all those things. But with this communication revolution, the direct result of this communication revolution was the increased demand for good governance. So what happened then uh, with the start of 21st century, there was, a, there was an increased demand of good governance. Wherever people see any bad thing happening, now they have the camera in their mobile phone, they just take the picture, they make a small uh, clip and they upload on the YouTube or they upload on Facebook or any other social media forum. So. Government became under immense pressure that how to how to manage this thing because the country was going to a mess because there are many delicacies available, many intricacies are there to fix different issues of public administration. But general public does not know. They don't know about the economic, uh, you know, the financial uh, restraints or whatever or the administrative restraints. But uh, uh, they 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 need an immediate and a quick fix of their problems. So with this. What happened that different research institutions in Pakistan, which conduct different kind of trainings, so they started uh, uh, doing some research on this, that how we can uh, capitalize this, this communication uh, revolution and how we can take this thing along and how we can use it in the, in the good governance. So one of the, amongst the different uh, recommendations, one recommendation was common in all the uh, researchers, res researches which were conducted and that was that we need to engage citizens in, in public affairs. Until or unless we do, until or unless we engage citizens in public affairs, it will be impossible to launch a program of good governance for a longer time. You know, if one political party starts a very good program once election happens if the other political the rival political party takes power so they actually take that this is their initiative so we need to do something else we need to do change this doesn't happen only in pakistan or in developing countries even in the developed countries even anywhere in the world you see we see these kind of things so with this theme, all the federating units, all the provinces started working on different kind of themes to engage citizens. There was a kind of an atmosphere of a competition among different uh, federating units. But I am now, uh, in this presentation, I am focusing on the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, the KP, since I was working in the KP. So I'll be talking about this performance management and reform unit Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and above all the citizens portal. So what happened? that the chief secretary of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, this is very important, that this initiative was not taken by the chief minister, although the chief executive of the province is the chief minister, but the administrative head is the chief secretary. So the chief secretary took 
took this initiative uh, to initiate a, a citizen engagement model via a mobile app. So what happened, the benefit of this remained that all the political parties own it. I mean, this is an, uh, an initiative owned by the bureaucracy of Pakistan, you can say. This is one of the success stories of the bureaucracies of, of the world, I can, I can call, I can quote it like that. And uh, it is apolitical, all political parties take, take interest in it. Uh, the whole civil service is very serious about it. And what Chief Secretary did, the Chief Secretary, first of all, uh, made key performance indicators for all departments, set timelines for their performance, and then he started doing the quantitative review of performance. This was for the first time in the history of Pakistan that a quantitative review happened. Previously, there used to be a qualitative thing. For example, I am in charge of the municipal services of a, of a, of a small um, uh, subdivision. So I can say that, okay, I have lifted X, uh, uh, tons of uh, garbage from the streets of my subdivision and there was no check on it. But for the first time what happened, they made, a, they made scientific calculations that this subdivision has a population of X number of people, X number of people produce Y number of garbage and the municipality has a capacity to lift Z number of, uh, Z amount of garbage. So whether this municipality is lifting this Z amount of garbage or not, if, what is their, 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 their efficacy in it? 95%, 100%, 60%. And what the other thing uh, came, uh, came uh, on the surface was a well-knit mechanism of a complaints management via citizens portal. That is a citizens engagement thing. I'll, I'll dilate upon this point in the next slide. And finally what happened that the, the third facet was that there started, he started a performance reviews on telephonic as well as the manual surveys. What happened that there was a complete unit, the performance uh, management and reform unit. They used to telephone people who used to issue complaints and these kind of things. They had their telephone numbers and they used to ask, are you satisfied with the performance of the officer? You complained about this thing, whether it has been fixed or not, what is going on? So this kind of a direct interaction of the chief secretary, the topmost echelon of bureaucracy with a common street man and removing all kinds of barriers from in between. What happened that it, 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 it increased immense pressure on the street level bureaucrats, on the field officers to perform. Otherwise, their performance, their, their, their career progression was linked with this performance and there was a grading of officers. After there was used to be a monthly and a quarterly review, monthly review used to be done, is, is being done uh, by the head of the department, by the secretary and the quarterly review is done by the chief secretary himself in which the whole day is reserved and different departments come and they compete. There, there is a proper grading system which tell which officers is performing good, who is, who is, who is performing bad and what happened as a result of it, uh, the, all the political interference become uh, interference in the affairs of, of, of uh, different kind of administrative affairs, it started declining because even if an officer managed to get this political interference for managing a posting, the chief secretary used to show the results of that officer in the previous post that to the chief minister even that, sir, you are saying that this guy should be posted there. Look at his performance. He has simply not performed as the subdivision, so he does not deserve to be. So this was an empirical data available with the chief secretary, with, with the whole world, so that we could, uh, I mean, uh, uh, make different kind of uh, studies on that. So how the citizen portal works, we call it the app because we uh, are basically um, very afraid of, I must say, <laughs> this app because citizens can um, just do that and uh, it, it may, makes our life <laughs> very difficult. So what happens, that's a very simple thing. It's, a, it's an app, you can download it. You, if you see anything wrong, you see there is a garbage there, no plowing has been done, there is an electric pole which is uh, slanting, whatever you want, there is, a, there is an encroachment on the street, there is an illegal speed breakers or you see anything, you can just take a picture, you can make a small kind of a clip, you can even uh, rec record your voice and then you upload it. If you know which department is responsible for fixation of that problem, you can directly assign and if you don't know you need not to worry at all you will just complain there is a full-fledged mechanism uh, a, a complete unit is uh, sitting in the chief secretary's office which analyzes the complaint marks it assigns it to the concerned department or the concerned officer and 
looks their response for 22 days. If within 22 days, that complaint is not resolved, this complaint, for example, an officer sleeps over it. This is this is generally happens in a developing country that if an officer receives a complaint, they just sleep, okay, we'll, we'll look into it later on. But if within 22 days, an officer does not respond, what will happen? This complaint will be escalated to the higher echelon, to the higher level, the supervisory officer uh, 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 officer's desk, uh, dashboard. So it will be, it will start flashing on the dashboard as a, as an escalated complaint. And if after 42 days of the complaint, I mean the 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 supervisory officer has 20 days. If after 20 days, uh, supervisory officer even does not take any action, 42 days have been uh, elapsed. So it will, this complaint will be super escalated to the office of the chief secretary and these super escalated complaints are taken very seriously, very negatively on the part of the performance of the officers of different departments. Chief secretaries do not spare those officers from whom super escalated complaints are coming. And with this, this uh, performance review unit, it is uh, having all kinds of conducting all kinds of surveys. It is making telephones to the people. People can grade. For example, you nowadays make a WhatsApp call. Once the call finishes, it, it tells that kindly grade it like five stars, four stars, three stars, two stars. So like this, the citizens also, once uh, uh, an officer says that I have resolved this complaint, the citizen tells that I am satisfied. Five number, five out of five, four out of five, three out of five, two out of five. So the proper control or the power of all this mechanism lies in the hands of street people, of common people, of citizens of Pakistan. So it creates a different uh, kind of, it, 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 it was a sea change in the administrative system of Pakistan. We, the bureaucrats, the civil servants, before 2013-14, uh, we were not... Uh, frankly speaking, we were not accustomed to these kind of things, these kind of external accountability, such an external accountability which is quantifiable, uh, which which can be, um, uh, I mean, shown to you at any review stage, at any, in where, where all the officers are sitting and immediately a dashboard appears, it shows your performance and in front of your peers, you are just embarrassed at what the hell I have done that oh my god I should have taken much interest in it and the people the officers who does not take interest in it they are first issued show cause notices and then they are removed from their post they are transferred to some other department something like that and then there is a satisfaction scoring people generally have uh, a power to comment on their administrators for example, I'm administrator of a, of a district. So generally people can pick up and they say that we are satisfied with this performance. If they say we are satisfied, they'll have to put reasons. If they say ah, we are dissatisfied, they'll have to again put the reasons for that. So this is basically the working of the app. Uh, now I'll come to the success story. This uh, app uh, got second position in the World Government Summit 2019, which was held in Dubai. Around 76, 77 countries were competing with different kind of initiatives uh, of public administration. And this app uh, 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 stood uh, second uh, uh, in that competition. Uh, now we do some quantitative analysis and the qualitative analysis of uh, this, uh, uh, of the working of this app. I don't want to bog down into too much statistics, but just, uh, I mean, the, the, the big kind of statistics that the total number of registered users are more than 1.1 million. I mean, the one, more than 1.1 million uh, people have uh, downloaded the, the, this app and they are working, um, I mean, using it very frequently. And then there are some breakups like province-wise or, or some other. And if you see the complaints, so you can see that 92% uh, uh, complaints. We, we are actually seeing the complaints and the resolved ones. So the federal government officers resolved 92%, Punjab government like 88% if you go to the total. So 86% is on average a complaints redressal rate. I mean in a country like Pakistan 86% is a big achievement. Believe you me it is a big achievement if you see that 86% complaints which the citizens lodged have been uh, resolved. And now all the policy framework actually revolves around uh, these kind of these complaints. I'll show you in the later part of, the, of this presentation. But if you see the citizen feedback, so the total is 43%. So on one side, government says that we have resolved 86% complaints. Citizens say that we are, 43% citizens are satisfied, rest are not. So there is a gap in between. Now this gap can be, I mean, every complaint has a different kind of dynamics. 
The gap can be that there are financial constraints or some administrative constraints. For example, uh, there, is a, there is a complaint that uh, uh, electricity shutdown happens a lot in my village. For example, this is a complaint. Uh, now this electricity, Pakistan is a short of, Pakistan is a country which is short of electricity. So we can't do anything. So the officer says that I have called this gentleman or I have given the reply, I have done all the things. From my side, this is resolved. But the, the consumer is not satisfied. So he puts the button unsatisfied. So this kind of a thing, these kind of things happen when there is a gap between uh, citizens' uh, uh, satisfaction and the, uh, the review uh, and, the, and the officer's performance. But the chief secretary's office does these kind of reviews. They see wherever there is a difference of reporting, reporting by the officer that we have done that, but reporting by the citizen that we are not satisfied. So they look into the, into the complaint and all the process whether that complaint has been handled uh, properly or not. <laughs> Uh, these are this is the machinery at work the total dashboards are around 8000 and out of which 89% are um, uh, active the others are in the in the process of activation uh, and now <coughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen we have proper statistical data where what problem lies for example if we see the major issue of uh, the people, uh, the major issue of uh, different uh, uh, areas of Pakistan, the, f the top one is the municipal services. People more complain about the municipal services like lifting of garbage, repair of streets, street lights, etc. Because you know, for a street man, government means the municipal service. First of all, if they are getting water, cl clean water, if their garbage is being lifted, if they see the plowing is going on, uh, um, uh, traffic signals are working, street lights are working. So general impression is that government is working. And if these kind of things do not happen, so uh, the problem happens. So this is basically some statist statistics which tell that 22% out of the total, 22% complaints were on the municipal services, 18% were about the energy and power, Education at 11%, health at 6%. So, I mean, uh, this is just to tell you about the, the stats. And uh, if we analyze the data from the province-wise, so we can see that different kind of provinces have different kind of problems. So if the prime minister sees, because now this initiative has been taken up by the prime minister office. So if the prime minister is wants to analyze the problems of a province, so they exactly know when the chief minister comes to the prime minister. So the prime minister's staff initially, uh, previously briefs, uh, the Prime Minister, that the Chief Minister is coming, these are the problems in the province. So kindly um, uh, ask the, the Chief Minister how uh, the province is being run. So it is not just that how things are going and the other says, okay, it's all, all set, all perfect, all is okay. So these kind of things have now changed in Pakistan. So these are like different governments with different, and this is uh, the data of different divisions like ministries that how many uh, complaints were lodged about a ministry, how much was resolved and then there's a percentage etc. So I'll just skip them because, and then there are, this is the data of the super escalated complaints. We see that education department has the highest super escalated complaints. This means that education department is not taking interest. So the chief secretary will call secretary education and ask him, make him accountable. What is your problem? Why complaints are being escalated so much? Why the other people are working and you are not? And these are the citizen feedback. You can, you can see uh, uh, people are very much alert about giving the feedback, etc. So these are some, some of the statistics. And now we come to the qualitative analysis. I have, a, 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 I mean, chosen two uh, things to, to dial it upon. The first one was the renovation of the land records of computerization. Uh, Self-example is a bad example, uh, but I have uh, chosen my examples as a, as a district administrator in Mardan. Mardan is a, is a, is a district of uh, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, which has a population of 2.3 million. And uh, uh, there was a complaint, there was a land record computerization center and people used to complain that uh, we don't have facilities, we have to wait under sunshine and we have to wait for long time queues. The woman used to complain that we don't have any, um, I mean, any separate corner for feeding our kids or something like that. So when these kind of, and I had no uh, kind of uh, resources with me to resolve all these kind of complaints. But these kind of complaints were discussed at the level of the chief secretary and the chief secretary issued some kinds of funds to me and I had to renovate it. And this, uh, that, uh, I mean this, uh, um, uh, the, 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 the center which uh, I uh, renovated or my team renovated actually, 
uh, was just visited by the president of the World Bank when he was visiting Pakistan. And uh, this was one of the initiatives which was shown by Pakistan that uh, the ease of doing business is getting better and better. And Pakistan has, uh, from the previous year, Pakistan has jumped much higher in ease of doing business uh, index. So one is that uh, uh, thing which I'll show you, uh, a small video. Uh, the other is an anti-encroachment drive. So this is a soft component of the government. The other is a hard component of the government where the government uses its muscle. It's a very interesting case study, I can say. <clears throat> a complaint was received back in 2017 perhaps that 40 years ago when I was a child, uh, there used this, there, there is a canal road, road, canal patrol road we call it. It used to be double road, but now it is single due to encroachment. So what happened that I asked my revenue staff, the land staff to go and measure. And what they reported, they reported that there is no encroachment on straight land. The road is actually just a single road and there is no double road. So uh, I said, okay. So this, uh, uh, I resolved it that the complaint is baseless. This man, an old man obviously, if he's saying about 40 years, so he must be some 55, 60 years old guy. So what he did, he put the button unsatisfied. This complaint, this complaint was picked up by the uh, staff of the chief secretary. The chief secretary office called them and he said that we were, when we were children, there, that was a double road. But now it's a single road and the deputy commissioner says, so I received a call from the chief secretary's office that Mr. Deputy Commissioner look into it personally, go to the spot personally, make measurements and submit the report. So when I looked into it personally, because the, the revenue field staff was perhaps, it was all commercial uh, build, all were commercial buildings, plazas and multi-story buildings, perhaps the local uh, revenue staff, the street, the street level bureaucrats, which, which we call, they were in connivance with them or they managed the report. But now <clears throat> there was no option left for them to manipulate or for me to remain in my ease and remain in my comfort zone. I had to go, I visited, we had all that thing. And believe you me, it was a big encroachment. And then we removed that encroachment. We'll uh, see a small uh, clip of that as well. And this is not just one operation. These kind of uh, kinds of hundreds of operations have been done all across Khyber Pakhtun and all across Pakistan. So we'll see just these uh, two small clips and then we'll, we'll end. So... So, uh, I mean, this was basically, I'll just uh, go on skipping them, it, it, it may be a bit long. But the previous thing was, uh, this, this was basically the condition of the land uh, computerization center. People used to come from far-flung areas, they started, used to start journey at 6 a.m., reach there, but there was no... <clears throat> Uh, I mean, much better facilities were a very conventional kind of a center. Uh, there were not much facilities like that. But once we uh, renovated it, upon the basis of a complaint, different kinds of complaints, then managed, changed the policy of the government, government issued resources. I was constrained, I was asked to conduct all kinds of renovations. So we made all kinds of uh, renovations and then people had a, had a good thing. So um, you can see, the, the proper sitting areas, we had separate areas for the ladies. There were dual screens and something like that. Some TV screens were also highlighted. And uh, uh, this was not just the case, uh, rather uh, the chief secretary, Khaybar uh, Pakhtunkha at that time, he himself came and appreciated uh, this uh, 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 response. And again, this facility was uh, visited by the uh, president of the World Bank just two months back. Here I am uh, briefing the chief secretary. And the other was, uh, uh, there will be a bit drama, kindly bear with me. Uh, so uh, this is this anti-encroachment drive which I told you. So, uh, So you can see that the level of the structures which had been built on the government infrastructure with the connivance of local people and you can see that it was like 24 meters uh, was the uh, thing and we had to uh, I mean do all these uh, uh, encroachments and um, the officers from India and the Pakistan they know that it is very difficult because generally uh, Anti-encroachment is, uh, the encroachment is a mafia kind of a, kind of people. So, 
you have to have that uh, kind of thing so since i was asked to go personally so i had to remain there personally and i had to supervise this thing otherwise generally dcs don't do that and these are basically the scenes when we were assistant commissioners young officers we never saw our deputy commissioners in the field doing all these things but thanks to this app that we have to now go out so i mean 273 structures were like so i mean this is there were there was a big drama so <clears throat> Was With no, no, no. There was a security. People, people are being arrested in the middle. You can see the police vans and all those things. There was a complete plan. You know, you have to manage the traffic plan. You will have to manage the electricity and all those things. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this app, which was started by a chief secretary of one province, has been taken up by the prime minister now, and it is being supervised from the from the federation level and. it has it is now emerging uh, we have two benefits on one side it is emerging as a good governance thing governance issues are being fixed with the with the citizens at the center not the officers at the center the whole <coughs> shift has occurred in the dynamics of public administration where previously officers used to be uh, calling the shots but now the citizens are calling the shot and on the other hand there is a channelization of the energies of youngsters especially for example previously the when youngsters or the citizens used to see any bad thing they used to upload it on social media and a cribbing used to start that cribbing ultimately used to lead to frustration and depression at times people used to see that what the what government is doing for us i mean we are living in a very bad thing or something like that so now that social media thing is is, is managed in a manner that people now upload these kind those kind of uh, clips or uh, pictures or uh, video uh, or audio uh, clips uh, on this app and they exactly know that we will be listened the the first and foremost problem in complaints management system all across the globe i think is that people don't have the certainty that their complaint will be uh, listened and it will be properly resolved or at least responded back but here there is a there is a uh, you know um, uh, there is a certainty of that and as a last sentence believe you me as a district administrator i know that the people who used to visit deputy commissioner's office for their multiple issues the, their number has decreased a lot when 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 i was an assistant commissioner i was a new entrant in the government uh, before launching of this app i used to see the deputy commissioner always surrounded by different kinds of people with different kinds of papers in their hands and telling that sir my problem is this my problem is this and dc had no time he just used to mark it to the subordinate officers and after 2 3 hours he had absolutely no idea how much complaints i have received what orders i have written on them and people used to roam from pillar to post to one department to the other department but now people don't come they don't bother uh, there is a there is a joke in uh, in, in the streets of pakistan uh, that uh, citizen portal kar lo just do the citizen portal <laughs> so people say that if you have any problem just do the citizen portal and rest things will be managed so with this thank you very much for your patient hearing if you have any question i am all available okay. and aur is um in one of your slides about the distribution of the users between the different districts how can you explain that in some districts with the user like um amount is is in a very high level and in some districts it's very low it's because there are less citizens or yes oh okay yes uh, the districts uh, are not uh, uh, i mean made on a uniform criteria of population some are very big districts for example uh Mardan was a district where these these things were uh, happening. So it it has a population of 2.3 million. The Peshawar is a district which has 4.5 million. Lahore is a district which has like 10 million, perhaps yeah, more than 10 millions. And Karachi, I mean, this is the biggest city of Pakistan, <laughs> which has I mean a huge amount of I mean like maybe 20 million or 25 million people. So and on the other hand, there are districts who have 0.3 million population maybe so it it varies thank you so much for the nice presentation thank you i'm curious um let us hear your personal position what could be done like differently or better in order to ensure a good public service and good governance 
Well, I think, you know, there can be multiple initiatives which can be taken simultaneously. And multiple steps are being taken uh, from different government functionaries to improve governance and to improve the, the public sector administration. Uh, however, I feel that this one is more relevant, perhaps the most relevant because of two factors. Number one, this is otherwise happening. Everyone has a mobile phone. Everyone has a camera in that mobile phone. Everyone takes pictures. So instead of, uh, uh, I mean, taking this thing or leaving this thing, going to an unnecessary frustration or dejection, let's analyze it. Let's face it. So, so I think this is this is. I I, I also feel that. Uh, I mean, this is this is very good. This is very good, and I have seen the change, this pre-app change and the post post-app scenario. There is a there's a big difference. The deputy commissioners of uh, uh, pre-app era used to play golf and they used to go to different uh, I mean um, um, different clubs to play tennis in the evening something. But now you don't have the time. All the time you are seeing the dashboards. How many complaints are there? How many have been escalated? How are many are being super escalated? And after quarterly review of the chief secretary, believe you me, it was not a simple or a very cozy thing. The chief secretary used to grill the officers literally. And when your career progression is linked with, with this app, so if you do not listen to people, you will be removed from your post. And then, you know, it is not just removing from the post. It is your, your honor which is at stake in front of your peers. And... Human history tells that we, the sapiens, we are more sensitive about our honor than even our life at times. So, I mean, the esteem and the prestige of officers used to be at stake if they don't listen to the complaints of the people. So that is why. So this is going on. Can, 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 Sir. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so in uh, <clears throat> many civil service systems, it's difficult to fire somebody, right? So in this case, there actually are cases where their complaint system leads to fire. Is this firing is difficult? I understand. Yeah, yeah. I hundred percent okay. agree with you. Okay. Yeah, but at first stage, <clears throat> they are issued a show cause. Okay. They are removed from their post. Yeah. They are sent to the headquarters, okay. where there are much less responsibility. They can be even sent to the training institutes. And above all, the career. Yeah, I remember that. An important thing is that the career progression is. There. Previously, what used to happen that uh, in the performance evaluation reports, the the reporting officer used to write uh, about the intelligence, okay, etc. Okay, 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 okay. But now there is a quantification of things. How many complaints were lodged to this office? How much has been resolved? How much has been taken care of properly? The officer is responding to public needs or not? So something like that. Yeah. Right. Is it your report that uh, related, related to the education sector, there was the, uh, the most complaints? Yeah. So what type of complaints those were and uh, what, I mean, uh, led to uh, <coughs> the compliance of the uh, yep. uh, organization Two two issues in the education sector which Pakistan generally face all across uh, all in all the provinces. Number one, teacher absenteeism, the absence of teacher. Teacher has not come. So whenever a child comes back to school from school to house, the parents ask, "What happened to the school?" Oh, our teacher was not present. So they immediately do. So number one, the top level is this, and the other is the posting transfers of the teachers. And the third one is the lack of infrastructure, the lack of facilities, for example, playgrounds or something like that. So these are the basically three major factors of the education department. But this does not mean that it, they, these complaints should super escalate. The education department will have to respond back, will have to tell the complainant that, okay, you are asking about the, the infrastructure issues, but Currently, we don't have money. Once we'll have the money, we'll have the infrastructure. And uh, 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 to further elaborate this point, the government's policies are now driven by these kind of things. For example, government had to allocate funds for renovation and uh, uh, of the of the land records office to make it more uh, uh, welcoming for the for the for the citizens. Likewise, if there are some schools or some colleges where there is a lack of uh, infrastructure, so people are sending complaints so what happens because nowadays even in the we saw in the in these election campaigns the the previous government guys used to take pride in the election campaigns even that see we saw that people are complaining about this issue 
I was the minister, so I allocated funds. Are you happy now? So people used to say, yes, we are happy now. So these kind of things are, the ball is, uh, is moving very fastly there uh, with regard to this app. Thank you very much. Thank you.